Hello, and thank you for joining me. A few weeks ago, I had a few days off, so I caught a bus, leaving the hustle of New York City behind for a bit, and returned to my homeland of Virginia. And I just happened to be back in town for a strawberry season, so I want to bring you a couple of recipes that celebrate the height of that short-lived season. Strawberry shortcake, strawberries in a marsala sabayon, and strawberry sabayon gratiné. Something about being home and making these nostalgic recipes puts me in an existential sort of place, so I'm going to ramble a bit more than normal. Now, I went to college and lived in Richmond, and it's an amazing town, but I spent my younger years in the suburbs of Hanover County. While Hanover County could definitely be considered suburban, I always enjoyed how it also felt a bit rural. Growing up, you were never too far away from a field of corn or soybeans or some horses that you could pet. One could even fancy themselves agrarian adjacent. This is where I went to high school, actually. As a terrible student, I used to sit by the window in Latin class and look out at the field across the street. When I felt really overwhelmed, I fantasized about jumping out the window and just running away through that field. Poetic, yet maybe not the best form of stress management. However, even in my high school days, we could see that many of the fields and woods were disappearing and being replaced with cookie-cutter houses these vinyl cubes that appear seemingly overnight. They say there is no money in small-scale farming. Now, some 10 years later, the whole county is transformed. Barely any of the kids can call themselves agrarian adjacent anymore. Here, a thin line of trees veils the coming reality. A place once populated by sturdy ranchers on one-acre plots is now dominated by craftmaster fortresses. And this is what a bad Latin student would see today looking out the same window. The entrance to this subdivision used to be the dirt driveway for some farmer. Sometimes the developers slap the word farm on the name of the neighborhoods as some kind of ode to the past, but it feels mostly ironic. So what about those strawberries, you say? Well, despite all the odds, you can still get in a car, drive into the last bucolic stronghold of Hanover, Enjoy the breeze and scenery. When you hit the dirt road, you know you are close. And eventually, you find a dreamy little patch where for a few weeks out of the year, you can pick your own strawberries. And even though you haven't been in years, the older woman at the counter still sort of remembers you and asked if you could still stay in New York City. And I say something like, well, it certainly can't get any worse. And then you get to work. Sampling a strawberry off the vine, warm from the sun, mm, it's a very special thing. This is my mom. She grew up working for hours in the garden under the watchful eyes of her industrious mother. So she is much quicker at picking than me, but I still manage to be quicker than some people. Now that we have our haul, let's get back to the ranch for the recipes. Let's start with the Marsala Sabayon. I first made this classic when I was still in college and cooking was starting to become my primary obsession. I watched Cooking at Home with Julia and Jock incessantly, and this is the recipe they used. I have here six large egg yolks and about a third a cup of regular granulated sugar. I'm just getting it started by whisking the yolks with the sugar until nice and smooth. Then I add about a cup's worth of marsala. That's exactly a cup. That's exactly a cup. Then I place the metal bowl over a pot of slightly simmering water and I keep whisking. The mixture will get foamy at first, and then as the bubbles begin to subside, it will thicken significantly. It should look like this, almost like a slightly thin mayonnaise. Keep it covered in a warm place until we need to use it. Let's prep our beautiful strawberries. After giving them a rinse, I want to go in with a small knife and just take the very top of the green off, leaving as much fruit intact as possible. Then we want to simply quarter those strawberries lengthwise or simply half them if they are extra small. Once I've got them all in a bowl, I want to macerate them with just a tablespoon of sugar. This helps draw out a bit of their juices and concentrate the flavor. I also hit them with just a little squeeze of lemon juice. Assembling the sabayon is very simple. Pick out a beautiful glass, spoon in a bit of your strawberries, spoon in a bit of sabayon sauce, spoon in a bit more strawberries, spoon in a bit more sauce, strawberries, sauce, and that's it. 
simple and elegant, and perhaps something new to you. Now for our classic shortcake. I need to make biscuits. I have here one and three quarters cups of all-purpose flour, and to that I'm adding two and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, three quarters teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of sugar. Once I whisk those dry ingredients together, I want to go in with eight tablespoons of cold butter and make sure each chunk is coated in flour. And I'm not being fussy today, so I'm just going to break this butter up with my fingers pressing it together until you get what looks like squashed little peas. Next, I go in with about three quarters cup of very cold buttermilk. Give it a mix, and this is what we call in the biscuit making world a shaggy mess, right where we want it. Pop your dough out onto a floured work surface, bringing it together gently with your hands. Sprinkle a little flour on top as needed. Knead the dough into a rough rectangle, then give it a letter fold. Some people also like to simply cut the dough into two and then stack the pieces on top of each other, so feel free to explore this method, but I'm going to stick with the folding method, doing two more for good measure. Now for shaping our biscuits. Using a knife, I'm just trimming the outer edges of our dough so we have nice lines. Then I divide the dough any way I see fit. This isn't kunyaman, so I'm playing it a bit fast and loose here. I probably should have made less biscuits, but it'll all work out in the end, I promise. Now I pop our biscuits onto a baking sheet, glaze them with just a bit of a basic egg wash, and since these biscuits are for shortcake, I want to sprinkle just a bit of sugar on the top of them. Now we go into a 450 degree oven and bake them for about 10 to 12 minutes. While our biscuits bake, let's whip our cream. I have here one and a quarter cups of heavy whipping cream and about a tablespoon of sugar. I'm just going to whip that until we have a nice soft, soft to medium sort of peak. Beautiful. Now that our biscuits are done, let's assemble our shortcake. Find a pretty plate. My mom always has a lot of good options. Because I made small biscuits, I think I will use two for this. I just want to split that in half, put the bottom halves on the plate, spoon on a healthy amount of our macerated strawberries, give your berries a nice pillowy dollop of our whipped cream, and then finish it with your sparkling biscuit tops. Look at that. Not so bad for oddly shaped biscuits, huh? And finally for our gratiné. Put the rest of the strawberries in an oven-proof vessel of some kind. Take about half a cup of our whipped cream and mix that into our leftover sabayon. Mix it together until well incorporated, then spoon the mixture generously over our strawberries. Now we simply pop that dish under the broiler and keep our eye on it. It won't take long. That looks pretty nice, but maybe we could get a little more caramelization. That's better. And there you have it! Strawberries and Marsala Sabayon, Strawberry Shortcake, and Strawberry Sabayon Gratiné. So thank you for joining me today for these recipes and reflections. I don't want to sound like sour grapes about my hometown. I'm not suggesting that things should stay the same forever. Change is an inevitable part of life. We all deserve affordable housing. We should all be able to send our kids to good schools. I'm also not saying that we should all live in the country. I guess what I'm getting at is whether we are in the country, the city, or something in between, we should remember that, like the strawberry, we too are ephemeral, and we should keep that in mind when we plan and organize our lives and choose quality over quantity. Live within the seasons. Until next time. Cheers.